Joe Missoula addresses some of the things we've been talking about a lot, including adding to his staff and having a full offseason to prepare. Plus, Mike Gorman, his final season, really? We're going to talk about it all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics Podcast, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I'm here for you every day. Well, this is the last Monday through Friday show, so this is my last Friday. Uh, next week, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I will be here for you three days a week next week, starting uh, for, for the month of August, and then a few first couple of weeks in September. It's the off season, but still three podcasts a week on the Celtics in the off season. We're going to make it happen, baby. So make sure you're subscribed, hop into that YouTube page, hit that comment section. Let me know what you think about the show. I'm John Corrales. I used to play. Now I work and write and cover the Celtics for Boston sports journal today. A few different topics. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Mike Gorman later in the show. He uh, is going into his final season as the TV play-by-play man for the Celtics. That sucks. Uh, we'll talk about that. We're going to start with Joe Mazzulla. Uh, He was at Jalen Brown's uh, contract signing. We talked to him a little bit afterwards, and he discussed a couple of things that we've been talking about a bunch. And so here to talk about that with me is my guy, Tom Westerholm. Tom, how you doing, my man? I'm good, man. How are you? I am great. It's Friday. We're rocking. And we've got something to talk about. We don't have to dip into the what ifs, although we could have. I will say we're recording the show on one of the ultimate Celtics what ifs. Uh, it's the 30th anniversary of uh, Reggie Lewis uh, passing yeah. away. It's one yeah. of the ultimate what ifs. I, I, I have to address that right away. Just 30 years. Yeah. Man, I cannot believe it's been 30 years. So, I mean, I was 20 years old, crying like crazy when I heard the news, and just, you know, it's it's it really is one of the ultimate what ifs because he was he was going to help carry this team. It's it's him and Len Bias, and if those guys were around, man, the 90s would have been so much different. Who knows where we would be right now as a franchise? But uh, I just I just had to at least mention that off the top that 30 years later, it's still. It still hurts. I wrote a piece about it for Boston Sports Journal, and I was still kind of welling up thinking about back on that day. So, uh, yeah. if you have any thoughts or or anything, how old were you? You were a kid. I was. I was gonna say I was uh, three, and yeah, probably, probably also crying my eyes out, but for a reason, for different reasons. Basketball, yeah. yes, yeah, man. I mean, like it's it, it's it's wild that there are two of those what ifs in the franchise's history you know like it's just just two of like the most like that aren't i mean there's what ifs that are fun there's what ifs that are great content to talk about and there's what ifs that are just like not fun to talk about and shouldn't be really discussed in the same way right like and, and those are these ones yes. so yeah i mean um you know just just really sad like just yeah. you know like yeah 30 yeah. years later it's and, and i mean it's it's kind of scary just even you know like just just kind of looking at like okay like you know Bronny just collapsed right like yeah. these guys like like these really elite athletes who were like so fine tuned and it's just kind of um you know it's it's a scary thing to, to is. think about you know young men in in that level of that level of health that level of of you know body efficiency whatever you want to call it yeah no it, um, yeah it's it's scary stuff man it's very scary yeah the Bronny situation was super scary I mean great that people were there i mean they had to save oh his gosh, life right. it seems like they had to like make sure he he was conscious and and I, they basically had to revive him that, that that's scary that is scary it's um i i think that 
I just think that athletes, young athletes should be screened for, for stuff like this. I think, I think the, the technology is there that we can screen and catch a lot of this stuff and, and, and maybe save some lives. And unfortunately, maybe it ends some careers shortly, but uh, I'd rather have that than the alternative. So that's all I'm going to say about, about that. Um, yeah, man, it's just funny. Like that 30 year number is just so huge. Yeah. Uh, but you know, here we are. The Celtics are moving into a new season with Joe Missoula as their head coach. And we've talked about so many times uh, that that one year of experience and him finally now getting this opportunity to prepare for the season. He was asked about this uh, and he said, uh, anytime, regardless if you get thrown into it or, or if you have it uh, after a season, you always want to figure out what you did well, where you can get better. And obviously with some ro small roster changes, there will be some things that we have an opportunity to do things a little bit different. So it's just a matter of taking a step back, figuring out what went really well, figuring out what we can do better, and then how uh, we go about doing that. It's his stock answer about improving. Figure out what you did well. How can we do the other stuff better? Which is basically how like that's what you do to improve right right a podcast i say okay what did i do well uh, i didn't do this well let me make sure i do that better next time it, it, it's a pretty safe way to say it but i think the you know baked into that is a lot of things that hey buddy you didn't do a lot of things well and you got to go back and 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 from something as simple as the timeouts, which I, I hope no longer becomes an issue, uh, to as you know, uh, big as offensive philosophy and defensive philosophy and, and stuff like that. So it's it's tough to kind of analyze Joe talking about with his stock answer, but you know, I I, I do hope that within that he's he understands the stuff that he did wrong. <laughs> And the, I guess my question is, will he see some of those things as things he did wrong? Or is he going to see them as, hey, I was right. They just didn't do it the right way. Or I'm right. You guys just aren't ready for it yet. Like, I'm ahead right. of the curve. Wait. Just wait. You'll see that I was right. It might take you a few years. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know where we land on any of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think if you want to say something good about like, I don't want to call it his stubbornness. Right. But like, I do think you learn a lot from sticking to your guns and seeing where your guns will take you to an extent. Right. Because like, you don't what you what you don't want to see is like a coach ping ponging back and forth and being like, oh, OK, we're going to shoot a lot of threes. Oh, that's not working uh, based on like a five game right. sample size. We got like, no threes now, just zero threes. You know, and it's like like you, you don't want to see that. So credit to Missoula that he had some ideas and some concepts that he wanted to work through. I mean, I'm sure, you know, when you're, when you're coming up as a coach, when you're an assistant coach, you know, and I mean, he was a, a head coach before and, you know, in college, when you're coming up, I'm sure you have some ideas on like, Hey, I really think this would work. I think we should do this. I think we should do that. Um, and you know, when, when you become a head coach, guess what? You've earned the right to try those things, right? Like even if the reason you're the head coach is because, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, well, yeah, I'm, what I'm there. Yeah, even if that's the yeah. reason, even if that's the reason you're the head coach, you're still in that position. You've still earned that right to try things. And at some point, if those things, you know, if, if you have to fix some things, then you've also earned the uh, duty to uh, change those things. If you want to continue being the head coach of said team. So, yeah, I mean, I think to me, like, Obviously, the Celtics wanted to win a title last year. I mean, the odds just got so stacked against them right at the start of the year that, like, uh, yeah, you, I just kind of give everything up. I'm, I'd be willing to give a lot of things a pass based on that. Oh sure, yeah, I like a lot of things. And if if Joe's gonna come back next season and and you know fix a bunch of things and you know keep the things that work and toss some of the things that didn't, great. Like, I think that's that's exactly what you want to see. In that instance, I don't mind that he stuck to his guns if sticking to his guns taught him some things because, um, you know, like sometimes you have to like make mistakes to learn things, but you, you do have to do the learning too. So I'm curious to yeah. see how that goes. I have thoughts. Mm. I will share those thoughts. I have thoughts on that. Um, you? Me. 
surprisingly, I, who do a daily podcast, have thoughts on what you just said. Uh, I will share those when I come back. First, today's show brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. So go ahead. It's baseball season. Take a swing. Get it? Swing? At betting on baseball. You get 10 times your first bet right here on FanDuel up to $200. So if you bet 20 bucks, you get 200 bucks in bonus bets because they're going to give you 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, whether you win or lose. So you get 200 to, you know, throw back on, I don't know, money line over under who's going to hit the first home run, whatever you want. It's all there. The app is safe. It's secure, very easy to use, very intuitive. And when you win, you want your money right away. Boom. They'll give it to you right away. It's, you get paid out instantly. No better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel. Again, America's number one sports book. It's the number one sports book here on Locked On. We love it. Sign up today at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. You get a $200, uh, you get $200 in bonus bets up to 200, 10 times your first bet. So why not make it that 20 and get that full 200? That's FanDuel.com slash Locked On. FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. Just ask you, please gamble responsibly. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Again, reminder, three days a week next week. I'm, I'm hammering it home. Three days a week next week so you can get ready for a little bit of reduced Celtics uh, podcasting for me, but still more podcasting than you're going to find anywhere else as we head into the offseason. All right, so Joe Mazzulla, he's he has to grow, right? He's acknowledged all of that stuff. We all know. There are places to grow. Um, I, I do think, and I, I, I can appreciate some stubbornness. I can appreciate some stubbornness because if you get together with everybody and you all come to the agreement, like this is, this is how we want to do it. And this is, this is the right way to do it. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what the media thinks. And Hey, I, if I'm going to be here on the podcast, screaming and yelling and Joe's an idiot and blah, 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 if I, if that's how it goes, then that's how it goes. Then, then he has to dig in and push back because I am not an NBA head coach. And as much as he's made mistakes and that, that was a, a, I'd say it was a good first season. He did make it to game seven of the Eastern conference finals. You know, even though it was disappointing that they didn't go further, that still most first year head coaches would sign up for that exact uh, ending. If you told us on September 30 that the Celtics were going to be within a game of the NBA finals again, we'd be like pretty good, man, that's, that's given, pretty given good. everything that happened. Right. You know, you didn't have Rob for half a season. Yeah. You, you, like th there's a lot of stuff baked into that. Acknowledging that Joe could have been better, but also I'm not an NBA head coach. I'm not in that locker room. I don't know all the dynamics that are going on on a daily basis. Like the, I only know when I'm in there, what I see, but I'm not in there all the time. And it's such a different dynamic when it's just coaching players. So the film sessions, it's tough to fully, I don't know, go all in on a guy when, when you don't know all of that stuff, he's clearly sticking to his guns for a reason. So, Again, I just hope that he takes that self, re, you know, reflection and and just applies it truthfully, honestly. Like I hope he can really look at his own performance and honestly assess that. And that's a tough thing to do. It's yeah. tough. I will watch the podcast from time to time. I will watch myself. And I get so like, oh my God, what are you doing? Why did you say this? Why did you, you know, what are you, I, I get on myself pretty, pretty tough sometimes. And it's, it's hard. Is, is, am I being honest with myself? I'm being too critical or are there, you know, sometimes people go that and go, oh yeah, man. Oh, oh look at me go. This was awesome. And you're like, mm, it's not so awesome. I just hope he can be honest with himself. Uh, and you know what will help? him stay honest with himself assistant coaches with a level of experience that he has on his team. And he addressed that too. He said, you can never have too much experience. You can never have too much perspective. We have a couple of guys that have been in different programs and have coached high level players, high level defense, been on high level teams. 
And so just to get that experience and get that perspective, I think that's great to have. It's an acknowledgement that they needed that level of experience. Like yeah, part of that reflection is having other people go, all right, Joe, love you, buddy. But eh, how about, how about mm, this little tweak? And I don't think he ever lacked like th- that was something that, that never felt like it was lacking. Like that acknowledgement of like, yeah, I am in a wildly different position now, you know, like he had just kind of, he had, I mean, he was a promising assistant coach. The fact that he got interviewed by Danny Ainge for the jazz job, I mean, tells you that he was a very promising candidate for, for positions yeah. down the road. But like, in the NBA, generally speaking, if you're an assistant coach and you're just kind of like, you know, you're just kind of like like a, a really good guy on the bench, the you're, you're just probably not going to get the first job you interview for. Like the first right. job you interview for is, you know, it's partly practice for you. It's partly right. like, okay, these are things that people are going to be looking for, all that stuff. He was clearly not like, you know, like experience wise. Yeah, he was clearly lacking. Like, and I don't think that's like an insult to say, like. We just praised the man for getting to game seven of the Eastern conference finals. He just hadn't been around that long. And right. you know, that, that self-reflection of being like, okay, Damon Stoudemire is going to help me. I have never played in the NBA. Damon Stoudemire played in the NBA. Damon Stoudemire has, as coach like that helps. Will Hardy was on Ime Udoka staff that, that would have helped, right? Like all these, like, and you know, the, the, the guys who stuck around, they even like, Tony Dobbins has been working with Jalen since, you know, 2016 or whatever, you know, what, how, whatever, yeah. however long that's been that those guys have been working together. Having that around helps. Like, like, I don't think Missoula ever lacked that kind of self-awareness, um, you know, that, that, that he could use some help. Um, so yeah, I think it's good that he got some, obviously it's like Brad has said a million times and I don't think Brad is like blowing any smoke here. Like I think it probably was really hard to find good assistant coaches, on September 30, when you realized all of a sudden you, you had your whole staff set and all of a sudden it's like, Oh boy, we're going to need some assistant coaches. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough, man. Yeah. turns out it's a lot easier to go get a Sam Cassell. It's a lot easier to fill out your staff. Um, you know, a Charles Lee, it's, it's a lot easier to fill out a good staff when you've got an entire summer to do it than it is to, to do it on September 30. So that one, I, I feel like you could, if, if you're a Celtics fan, I feel like you can feel, pretty encouraged about like just kind of the, the level of experience that is going to be on this staff now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I think, I, I think the quote from Joe talking about, you can never have too much perspective or too much experience. Um, that's, that is, I don't know, encouraging to just, yeah. yeah. We, we talk, we talk about that over and over and over again. And knowing understanding that that is that quote makes me think that he can like honestly assess himself because he acknowledged it. And, and if the, if the reporting is true and Sam Cassell, if, Sam, if you believe Sam Cassell, where he said, Joe reached out to me first, then yeah, that, that is also encouraging. Although I could, she could say that uh, Brad made Joe reach out to him. You know, right. Right. You know? Right. so who knows? Who knows? Sure. But, um, I Brad said, I joke around. Brad did say, he goes, it's, it's Joe's staff. Joe, Joe hired the guys. Um, so that to me is the acknowledgement. Okay. I could use a little experienced help on my bench and yeah, you keeping Tony Dobbins and I don't know. Who else is going to be a holdover? We'll see, I guess, soon. But to have these guys come in and for those guys to understand that you're not you're not really coming in to be on the bench and be kind of like, okay, get down on the starting blocks because once once we fire Joe, you're hopping into that seat. Like that's not what they're here for. They're here to support Joe Missoula. Uh, the acknowledgement that hey, I know I need some some experience here to lean on. It makes me feel good about what they're going to plan moving forward. And I've said this before, but for people who didn't hear it, it's meaningful to me that Sam Cassell coached on the Clippers with two wings as their best players. It's meaningful to me that Charles Lee coached on the 
Bucks with drop coverage with a huge guy in the middle is was their primary defense and very effective defense. So the things that the Celtics have, while not directly the same, are kind of parallels to what these guys have already seen. And so when the Celtics are going to be playing a certain style, you will be able to see, I think, some shades of Milwaukee in the defense. You'll see some shades of L.A. in the offense. You'll see some things where you say, hey, these are these are ways where you might not have realized, like, you can do this with these guys, or you whatever it is. Uh, and that's going to be super important for the Celtics uh, as they try to figure out this upcoming season. And, and if Joe is actually listening and accepting of it, like, like he seems to be, then I think Joe will have a much better coaching season as well. Yeah. Now, for those of you at home watching, Mike Gorman. Oh, this guts me. This guts me. His final season as play-by-play guy. Oh, my God. We'll talk about that in just a second. I want to say thank you to everyone who makes the Lockdown Celtics podcast part of their daily routine. Would love it if you also listen to me on the Lockdown NBA podcast, which I do on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. Uh, and, but we've got rotating hosts all week, and we're still five days a week there on Lockdown NBA, so check me out. Check us all out there. Uh, look, man, I don't, want, I don't want to make this sound like an obituary because that's when it's the, hard, it's the hardest thing to do in, you know, when, when you're talking about a guy's career coming to an end, a legendary career. All of these guys, a player retiring, making his farewell tour, a, a legendary broadcaster like him. It is almost like you're attending your own funeral and listening to all these people eulogize you to your face, which kind of sucks. But that's kind of what we're going to do. I, I'm old enough to remember when Mike Gorman first started in the broadcasting business because I grew up in Rhode Island and he was a sports anchor on Channel 12 before he started the play-by-play gig. And then he started doing college games with Tommy Heinsohn. I remember watching Big East basketball because Providence College is in the Big East, or I don't know if they are still, or I don't even know what conferences are anymore. But Big East basketball back then was meaningful. That meant something. That was a hell of a conference. And he was doing Big East basketball with Tommy. And then he got the gig to uh, do Celtics play-by-play. So I have been watching Celtics basketball for the entirety of Mike Gorman's legendary career, which makes me feel incredibly old myself. Um, man, that guy, that guy is the best. Not only the best as a play-by-play guy, but I can't tell you how many times just walking into the arena and we cross paths and he'd be like, you know, hey, so what do you think tonight? And just start talking about it. I'm like, oh, God. And every time. Dude, I, I started this gig in my mid-40s, and every time I would walk away, I'd be like, oh, my God. Mike Gorman wants to know what I think about tonight's game. What? Just legend. Absolute legend. Just the just such a just such a cool, classy way of calling games. You know, yeah. like, yeah. like a little understated, but just but like enough oomph behind the big moments to make yeah. them pop. Like, I think the best thing you can say about a play-by-play announcer is that, like, when the big moments hit, he can make them pop. And Gorman yeah. does that. Like, he's so he's so good at that. And, like, you know, like, you see it, right, like, around, like, you know, some of the best ones. I mean, you know, like, Mike Breen, you know, does that, too. Like, you know, bang. Like, that's it. But, like, yeah. got it. That's as, that's as good as bang yeah. to me. I don't know, man. Like, that's – Oh, yeah. Like, it's so good. And, like, you know, I think – like you could kind of see it coming, right? Just because, like you know, with 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 Tommy's passing and everything. I mean, I'm sure the gig, I'm sure the gig just feels really different, right? Sure, yeah. It's like I'm sure I'm sure that just feels different to be calling these games. And I mean, I think he on on a broadcast this past year, you know, he, he mentioned, I think he was uh, talking to Eddie, and he he said, you know, you guys were like my probably my favorite group to cover because I felt like I could get to know you guys. I don't necessarily feel like I can get to know these guys anymore the same way I could get to, you know, I'm yeah. sorry, I just, yeah. I think the job probably just feels a lot different now. Right. Yeah. Um, but man, when like, it's just, it, it's going to be such a, 
it, it's gonna be it's gonna be so different i i mean i i when you get into this gig you kind of like you know you kind of kind of lose a little bit of the like the oh the celtics need to win a title or oh the Celtics, you know but beyond just kind of analysis right but like with gorman retiring it's like man they better win a title <laughs> Like they, no, they better they better send this guy out right, man. Like he's been around for so long. He's he's such a legend. Like I, I'm I, I'm it's 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 gonna feel a lot different to watch a Celtics game um, than than it used to. I mean, he's just yeah. so recognizable, such a such a integral voice. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be weird to to yeah. watch Celtics games without without but, watching Mike Gorman. Sean Grandy's gonna end up getting the job, and he's gonna do a fine job. He's going to do really well. Like, like do, Grandy's yeah. really good. Like, and, and really he's got good. such a good rapport with Scal. Like, there, yep. that's a that's yep. a great crew. Yep. But nobody is Mike Gorman. Nobody's it's a Mike tough Gorman. act to follow, no matter who you are. Yep. Now, Sean Grandy is going to be good enough to follow that act Absolutely. with his own with his own brand. Um, but it's definitely a different brand. It's definitely a different brand. Um, the, the, the best part about Gorman, the, the, the best, the best of these play-by-play guys, I think about it is anticipating the moment and, you know, you're a musician, you know, like that, that drum kind of like the drum intros, like that big kind of like flourish. It you just, you can feel that the, the, the beat of a play-by-play guy's voice as the, you know, Oh, here's the pass. Oh, here's that pass. Here's the shot. And it's just like, da, 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 da. And it's like, boom. And like, as soon as that shot goes in and the crowd goes wild, and then he lets it just sit. Oh, and that's so he's the so best part. It's using his voice as a musical instrument. And it's anticipation, 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 payoff, and soak it in. And it's awesome when he does that because that building can get so loud and the players on the, uh, on the floor are just so crazy. And then he just knows exactly when to chime back in and then set up his play by his color guy to, to get that analysis just masterful. And to extend the analogy, he's so good at putting these little, these little, like, like these little precursors in there, right? Like let's say the Celtics are coming back, right? And they were down like 18, and like, I, I don't, I, I don't have like the phrase that he would use, but you can always tell when he's like, you know, like the, the, the way his voice goes, like it's an 11 point game, you know, like yeah, he yeah, kind yeah. of has that, like yeah. that nice yeah, yeah. little, like he's not, you know, 18, you know, like 18 to 13 point, 18 deficit point deficit to a 13 point deficit might be nothing, might be nothing yeah. that the Celtics just went on a five, nothing run, but it's a 13 point game. Like, yeah. And he kind of like puts those little markers in there for you along yeah. the way. That's like this little. Maybe we're building to something here. And it's like, if it doesn't build to anything, that's okay. He didn't go crazy, but yeah. he brought up the level of excitement just enough to where like the fans are right. Yep. Cause every fan is watching that little comeback and being like, it's a five, nothing run. I don't know. Maybe there's something here. And Gorman, I, I mean, he's, he's just so good at kind of like, mm. you know, rising with the tide rising, like, yeah. right. Like keeping the excitement with the tide. Um, he's, he's phenomenal, man. I, yeah. It's man. So much of that job is timing. So much yeah. of that job is just knowing when, and, and and it's just like the players. It's a feel for the game. You have to yeah. feel the game just like they do, and you have to understand um, what's you have. You do like like you just said. You have to understand the flow. You have to understand the guy sitting next to you, and it's one thing when it's Tommy, right? Like you, he and Tommy were the best. Uh, you switch to Scal. And it's, you know, Mike has to kind of like adjust and understand like he's, he's kind of the point guard and Tommy would just say, Tommy is a guy who cuts all the time. And Scal is a guy who pops all the time. And, you know, you just got to understand, okay, I got to run this game a little bit differently so I can get the best out of this guy because that makes a great broadcast. You can, you can be great with your got it's. And if the guy next to you is not adding anything to it, then the broadcast kind of sucks. And I think one of the things that Gorman has been doing with Scal a lot, and, and he did it with Tommy too. He, he will ask a question when the question is necessary um, to add some perspective there. Even if he knows the answer to the question, he'll ask the question to say, well, and, and, you know, what do you think? Why do you think he did that there? Or like, yeah, whatever, whatever the question is, 
And it's, look, again, Sean Grandy is going to do a lot of these same things. He has a different cadence. He has, you know, definitely after when you call a game on radio, you're calling you're calling it differently. Completely but also, different. like Sean Sean Grandy, like calls everything. He's UFC, basketball. Uh, I don't know, like, guys getting on and off the subway. He he he's there. He, he's called everything. But when you're used to doing a radio cadence, there's a radio cadence to it. You, you talk a little bit more. You're just more descriptive. Um, TV with pictures, the pictures paint the story. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how Sean kind of evolves if if he's just doing TV only. You know? yeah. He's got like yeah. 20 jobs. I think, now, I think now Sean Granny can just like settle down and do one job. And Sean Grady, Sean Grady's going to be the first guy to get a full-time NBA job and be like, oh, I can finally relax. Right, right, right. <laughs> Four-game road trip. This is nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I only man, work I, three hours a week now. Whew, I can, <laughs> right, uh, right. He can chill out a little bit. Jeez. Yeah, man. I mean, it turns out after like 30 years, you know, 30. Jeez. Oh, I mean, how, how, many, how many years has Gorman been doing it? That, oh, God. It's been... 40 40 some oh i just i i'm not actually i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but i will Sorry, find out let, let's call it 45 that sounds about right to me turns out after doing basketball that long you know a lot about basketball and you've got a great feel for basketball and you've got a great a great feel for watching basketball. how many this will be 43 oh wait 43 okay. mike okay. roman will call it a career after serving as a play-by-play -play guy voice for the celtics for 42 seasons 40 man that's crazy so yeah i mean like yeah, the, the the man has 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 watched some Celtics basketball. The man's seen some basketball. The man has a feel for basketball. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, you know, like like just growing up, like right. I I he's he's been the voice of the Celtics the whole time. I remember, you know, like when I was when I was young, I used to watch. I used to listen to Cubs games on the radio, and like like Pat Hughes and Ron Santo were the two guys that I would listen to yeah. like on the radio, right? And those two guys, like they meant more. To, like I remember, like I you know, my dad and I went to a Cubs game and like we were going to when we saw Pat Hughes and Ron Santo going into the broadcast booth, it was as memorable as seeing Sammy. Sosa, <laughs> right. It was like, because yeah. the, as much as I watch the players all the time, and as much as I like, you know, listen to like hear things about the players all the time. Yeah. These are the voices that I hear all the yeah. time. Like, and it's, you know, Mike's Mike's that guy. Mike's been that guy for 42 years for the Celtics. There's mm. Generations of Celtics fans. He's been the voice, the, the guy that you hear um so yeah man i i mean and and you know we've been those of us in the celtics orbit have been lucky enough to, to hear him for that long because it's yeah. been uh it's been a real blessing getting to uh getting to listen to mike gorman call the celtics it'll be yeah. it'll, it'll be a loss when he's done so they better win a dumb title <laughs> they better win the title so mike can call one more championship season get on that yeah. duck boat let's go <laughs> get, get him on the duck boat man i mean absolutely if you can't get your stuff together for Al Horford and Mike Gorman, then get out of the sport. You don't deserve, yeah. You, you honestly, don't, uh, do yeah. Come on. Honestly, if I said to these guys, forget the money, forget all that stuff. Like look around, look at what Al Horford has done. Can't you focus for a, a hundred games and say, okay, this I'm giving you everything I can for 82 games plus the playoffs because Al Horford and Mike Gorman, two of the nicest, most professional people you're ever going to meet. Like, God, gee, do it for those guys. Do it for them. You got to. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to do it. Win a title. Yeah. Go win a title for these Go guys. Go win a title. Just do it. Just, we Why haven't you done it? This is <laughs> every off season podcast should just be that should just be like, guys, go win a title. Go do it. No, no, just, just do it. Just win. Just win it. It's very, uh, it's very fat Tony in the, uh, Simpsons pretzel episode where he's a, <laughs> my wife, she's been very vocal about the pretzel monies. Why don't you get the money? Why don't you have the money now? 
So please, the money. <laughs> that's <laughs> why aren't you winning a championship? Why aren't you winning kind a of championship? Feel like that's what the Celtics, doesn't it kind of feel like that's what the Celtics have been missing? That guy just be like, Fat no, Tony? Just, just just yeah, Fat Tony, just just go win it. Just go. Just go why win. aren't you winning the title just now? Go win the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have been quite vocal about the uh, the championship. Yeah. Oh, I love Fat Tony. All right, that's it. That we're very Fat Tony references mean the end of the podcast. So thank you very much, Tom, for Appreciate your service. <laughs> and yes, sir, uh, Chef. <laughs> and thank you all for listening and for watching and having a blast with us here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. I'll say it one more time: Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week three days a week for all of august first couple of weeks of september then we go back to five days a week and then once the regular season starts some days six some weeks six days sometimes seven days depends on when they're playing because i will be doing post-game podcasts giving you all the celtics content you want so make sure you are subscribed you still want to hear celtics stuff so come on over here and get it and I would love it if you regular everyday listeners, if you're so inclined, I would love it if you share the podcast, tell everybody, tell your friends, tell your family, they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.